Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Adobe Summit 2019. Brought to you by Adobe. Hey, welcome back everyone. CUBE live coverage here in Las Vegas for Adobe Summit 2019. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick. We're here with a CUBE alumni, been at Adobe for three years, Anjul Bambri, Vice President of Platform Engineering at Adobe. Great to see you, thanks for coming by. Thank you, thank you, All right, you, John let's talk Jeff. engineering. That was your line on the keynote. <laughs> Great keynote today, by the way. Thank I was you. super impressed uh, with the content. Mm -hmm. um, I'm watching that slides you were presenting, I'm like, we're at a cloud company. <laughs> I'm feeling an Amazon reInvent here. <laughs> you guys built a really cool platform. Uh -huh. Take us through, this was your mission. That's true. So, so take us through the, your journey. Sure, sure. How did we get here? How did Adobe get this beautiful platform? <laughs> so, you know, we've been at it for a few years and um, as, uh, you know, we've seen CIOs and CMOs, right, that their focus is to really deliver, you know, delightful experiences to their customers. And not just once, but throughout the journey of the customer, right? Delight your customer every step of the way is what you'll hear from Adobe, from our customers. And we are really helping them to do that. And um, obviously in order to do that, there is, uh, and as you well know, that data is behind everything to do with experiences as well. Um, there is a uh, you know, lot of uh, interactional data and bringing it all together to really understand that holistic view of the customer is super important. And um, you know, as you build this realist, you know, the, the holistic view of the customer, it's not that you just build it once and you forget about it, right? You have to build this in real time because the interactions that customers are having with brands are through web, through mobile devices, through the apps that they're using of that, those brands. And the businesses have to understand that whole journey of the customer and understand what their preferences are, right? What, uh, you know, what they like, what they don't like. And be able to, keeping like that context, really during their journey, whether they're coming to their website for the first time or they are a repeat customer, be able to give them the right experience at every touch point. And that's where you need all of this data, which is a lot of data. <laughs> so so you, you know, we've been on this big data journey, uh, and me personally, uh, yeah. even uh, you know, for a long time. But the scale that I've seen here, I had not seen before. Our IBM conversation, when you were at IBM prior uh, from Hadoop World, mm -hmm. you had your eye on this big data trend. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now at Adobe, when you have real data coming in with applications out in the marketplace, to put a platform together is a hard task. And I want to ask you a specific question around that. Looking at the architecture slide, you have an analytics cloud, an ad cloud, a marketing mm -hmm. cloud, and a commerce cloud. They all have markets that they have to address and totally. be highly effective. Totally. In as a, almost a pure play standalone. Yep. But now integrating across each other now mm -hmm. with the journey that yeah. you guys are put together is difficult. I know that from a computer science background. How, does, how did you guys look at that architecturally? What were some of the guiding principles around mm -hmm. building that platform? Because you don't want to compromise the capabilities of those functional elements. Surely. So you decompose them, I get that. How did you put it all together? What was the key guiding uh, principle around it? Yeah, so um, that's a really good question because, um, I mean, Adobe has been delivering applications, right? Uh, like you said, whether it's around analytics or marketing cloud or advertising, and now we've obviously just acquired the commerce uh, cloud. And when you look at the common stuff around all of this, it's data, right? Um, data being captured through different channels, data that needs to be curated, um, you know, having a common data dictionary so that you know, things mean the same and um, even though they are captured through different channels. So gathering this data, curating this data, organizing it for that holistic view of the customer, organizing it so that you can do BI and reporting on that data is all something that we pull together in the platform layer. Now, it becomes that whether it is you're doing analytics on this, 
right, With, which could be your BI and reporting, or you're doing AI and ML on this to do your next best action, or you're targeting these customers with personalized content, you're doing it on that single version of the truth, which is the real-time customer profile that powers all of these different clouds, right? right? So that it's not like when you do reporting, you have one view of a customer, but when you are trying to show them personalized content, half the view is lost because the data was siloed. So we have gone past all of that. There's no data silos now, right? So the real-time customer profile is literally being updated all the time. Mm -hmm. That's the key mm -hmm. ingredient. That's the exciting a part of it. All. Yes. Right. <laughs> so I'm just curious, kind of philosophically in execution, because like I said, you've been in this space for a long time, and mm -hmm. one of the jokes I love to share is that you know we used to make decisions based on a sampling of something that happened yes. in the past. <laughs> now you know we can make decisions based on all of the, all data, of the data that's data. happening now. Yeah. But at the same time, your challenge is that the sources are changing all the time, the speed of the input is changing okay. all the time, okay. and, and the expected return on your reaction totally. is shortening all the time. Totally. So from, from just a data professional, yeah. you know, I'm sure it's super exciting and super scary mm -hmm. to move that paradigm shift to you got to deliver the right thing right now. Totally. <laughs> and and um, you know, one of the key things here is that as all of this data is being gathered, right, um, obviously this data has to be gathered where these events are occurring. So if you look at brands, their customers are global. They are transacting, browsing, whether it's on web, mobile devices, with that brand globally around the world. That means data has to be collected from these globally distributed edges. And it has to be brought in, processed in real time, building that profile. And as the data keeps coming, the profile is updated, right? And, and you can't have stale data in there, right? Because otherwise, you know, you are, you are actioning based on something that happened five minutes ago you know how we've seen that you buy something and you're still getting ads of that same product that you right. buy even a day or two days right. later. I already bought the tent, I don't yes. need any more tent ads. So right? that's because <laughs> that brand has a stale profile of you, right? But if they had the real-time customer profile, then there's no way that they would be delivering or actioning based on that stale information. So just like the data is being gathered from edges, even when we have to deliver the experiences, right? This is where edge computing comes into the picture, right? So we are also taking, so when you look at the whole architecture of the platform, yes, it's based on the cloud, and you know it's a big data stack, it's completely a SaaS offering, but there is also a big edge computing part of the platform which is where all the hot data is collected, processed, and actioned. And to your point, right, like as we build, say, predictive models or next best action on the data that's on the cloud, the scoring of the models has to happen on the edges where the events are occurring. So this is a complicated engineering problem but that's why I guess we love it. <laughs> <laughs> a big smile. So the data is critical. Let's talk about how um, Adobe's changed over the past few years. Mm -hmm. Because you guys did cloud, and I heard the nuance, I heard in the keynote, you know, reading through the reading mm -hmm. through the lines is that it's hard to get data right at the beginning. Yeah. You get cloud right, now you got data right. Yes. Take us through that point because this is where I think the key to success is. Uh -huh. How to make that data work because if you're going to have open APIs and open data, yep. integrity of that data, the right database, whether it's a time series or graph database, yep, yep. a lot of different applications might totally. choose certain technologies. Yes. You have to deal with that. How, yes. how important is yeah. the architecture on that? So, so that's why, that's a great question. That, um, you know, from a platform standpoint, our goal is that we have to be able to answer the questions with the right latency or speed as well as relevancy, right? So when we talk real time, it's about, it's latencies, you know, when you talk to engineers, they'll only talk latency, but it's not that, right? It's latency and relevancy. So 
in order to, depending on like if it's more like BI or reporting kind of questions or queries, you need to organize the data a certain way. For um, you know single lookups of customers, right? You have to organize the data differently, and that's where our IP comes into the picture. That how do we partition and organize this data to meet the needs of both operational as well as um, the more you know uh, like analytical kind of workloads. Yeah. So we support both. And to your point also that um, uh, you know when we need a SQL database versus a NoSQL database or a graph database, I mean, those are choices yeah, we yeah. make, but on top we are providing APIs. So we are abstracting all of that from the user. And you know, how, where we direct their question, that's all our IP. But their applications are not going to break because they're writing to the APIs. So as technologies advance underneath, we make those right choices, but again, so that they are yeah. getting the right latency and relevancy. So in the cloud game, we used to talk about this when you were, when you were on theCUBE when we had, when we had IBM, uh -huh. the DevOps movement was full tilt. Sure. And they use the term infrastructure as code. Uh -huh. So you're kind of getting at, I want to get your reaction yeah. to this, is that if applications and workloads are the use cases that are going to determine mm -hmm. the data structures, data architecture, and latency relevance equations. Sure. Isn't then, there's a new kind of infrastructure as code emerging? Is it data as code? So, or maybe ask this. Should the workloads dictate what type of data diversity and latency relevance is needed? Or does that come from the network? Again, the question is, the workloads are kind of in charge, I guess, is what I'm trying to get at. So this I, is I, a, Yeah, I would say that, you know, as a platform, you have to support all of these workloads, right? So which means that, um, from an architecture standpoint, we have to make sure that whether it's an analytical kind of a question or workload like BI reporting, whether it is you know, a more like an operational kind of a question around you know, that you want to just do a quick uh, question around you know, what did this customer buy or what transaction happened. The underneath data structures and databases, we have to pick the right ones so that we are able to support both. The because expectations, the expe I, guess, I guess the expectations yeah. of the workload. It is, So yeah. if you're running commerce, yeah. latency and relevance, low latency is going to be in the milliseconds or, got it. and relevance got have a high bar there too. Exactly. An analytics query for a BI tool might be, be different. three seconds. Yeah. So again, this is a huge delta yes. in terms of yes. capabilities. And Having that happen on the fly is hard. Yes. How do you guys do that? What's the I, secret sauce? Yeah. So that's that's the you know underlying technology that you know the the way we are building that is so that you can support both of those, and um, we. With the customers, we are sticking to that if they want SQL access to the data, they're getting that SQL access. Now, depending on the kind of queries, whether they fall as BI and reporting or more like transactional kind of things in nature, that's the, that those are the right technical choices that we are making behind the scenes, so that to the user, those are not apparent, right? Uh, because they can really focus on the insights that they are getting and really making decisions based on that insight and not get caught into how to build all of these different pieces right. so that they can support both of these workloads. The other thing is that you know, a lot of the time that has been spent in IT has been to figure out all of this so that the CIO can support the line of business like the CMO. Now, by you know, Adobe taking care of this, all this heavy lifting that IT had to do, I think that, you know, IT will be able to meet the requirements of the line of business much faster, and there's going to be, you know, the agility that is needed to support the business. I think that's really our goal in how we support the CIOs so that they don't worry about all this technology, all the data management, how to collect all this data from globally distributed edges. I mean, that's the partnership 
that we are you know, building with the CIOs so that we help them in their journey of really helping their line of business deliver the best experiences. Anjul, great to see you having so much fun at Adobe. <laughs> Thank you. What's it like there? Tell us, what's it like working at Adobe? You got a oh, platform, certainly there's a lot of hard problems to solve, yeah. so you got that on the engineering side. Tell, tell us what the culture's like there. Adobe is a fantastic company. I mean, I just love every bit, every, every minute that I've spent here is fantastic. It's you know great people, open culture, open to new ideas, and uh, uh, you know I guess uh, all the creative cloud you know has brought this creativity which is infused in people. So it's just it's it's just been a blast, and and you know people recognize the importance of how data is so critical to delivering those delightful experiences. And it's very rewarding to just see how focused everybody is in the company to really help businesses delight their customers. So it's, it's very rewarding. And the ecosystem rewarding. is great. Yes. How about the developer ecosystem? What's your reaction to that? Are they? I mean, Adobe uh, IO is, uh, I don't know if you are, you yeah. know. Yeah, so that's, um, so uh, if you think of all the creatives that work with Adobe products, and build their applications. I mean, the ecosystem is very rich. Yeah. Yeah. So combine creatives and the data and IT. I mean, so we should call this fantastic. marketing native, like <laughs> cloud native. You have the confluence of developers, developers, creatives, and creatives coming together, and uh, we call them dogs the and cats living together. I mean, this is we, like we call them the <laughs> uh, we call them the experience makers. Yeah. Right, so we are really yeah. bringing experience makers, developers, data scientists, all together. It's a whole new level for it's Adobe. It's a whole new level, it's fantastic. Andrew, thanks for coming on, sharing the insights. Yeah. It's theCUBE coverage live here at Adobe Summit in Las Vegas. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick. Stay with us, we're here for two days. We're in day one of wall-to-wall -wall coverage at Adobe Summit. We'll be right back.